In the first leg on a sweltering day in Swindon, the heat was on from the start. Hot day, that was our first worry, with uh, a lot of baldies in the team, plenty of sun cream flying around. You know, I've been in playoff situations before and I know the dangers, you know, and I think that uh, we didn't take anything for granted. His pocket, looking to turn provider to Moody. At the first leg we were quite lucky. I go. We were going to defend that day. We are going to keep a clean sheet no matter what. There you go. Smith's come for the return. And he's in. And in it goes to Moody. Park in. Oh. It come, come to me. I was, it was a little bit stuck under my feet, but I just managed to get a good contact on it and it took a deflection and, and went in. Iwalumo. Looking to set it up here for Hart. Just on. Carpenter. And it's found a way in. A wee bit of luck. A wee bit of a deflection as well. Straight into the top bin. Brilliant. And all I can remember was just to put, you know, the blue and white uh, fans going up, up, you know, behind the goal. And sort of Chris Salumu sort of grabbing hold of me and sort of getting me in a bit of a bear hug. So it was, uh, yeah, it was good. And Chippy came up the worldie that day. Um, so it was nice to take them back to the with Dean, I think four or five days later, with a, with a nice away win. Back in Sussex, the conditions couldn't have been more different. But by the finish, no one was worried about the rain. It was ridiculous, wasn't it? You know, um, everything about it, the weather, you know, was poor and the stakes were so high. I just remember being so nervous, me and Leon talking about it. That night, I think, in our place, Swindon were the better team, in all honesty. That's a good stop from Roberts, but he hasn't held on, and Igo sending it across, and surely Parkin has scored! Swindon have got the goal they needed! For us to go to extra time was disappointing. Then in extra time, they scored. He slipped it through for Fallon! It's in from Rory Fallon! I thought that's it, we've gone. The season's hard work had just been, been ruined in sort of half an hour's football. Everybody in the ground thought that um, the opportunity had gone. That included some of the Swindon players. Sam Parkin was convinced he was Cardiff bound for the final. Towards the end, you can, because Sky, such good footage, you know, he's kind of saying to me, I'll, I'll text you when I'm down there and I'll send a picture on the halfway line when I'm standing there, blah, blah, blah. With hindsight, winding up Virgo wasn't such a good move. We knew we only needed one goal. The commentator says, you know, you're not there, Swindon. Well, the 30 minutes are almost up, Swindon fans. There's a long throw from Charlie. But you're not there yet. Danny's flick. And the big man steps up. And it goes! I didn't see the ball hit the net, but I knew I had such a good connection on it that I just knew it was in. I've snatched the goal through Virgo! That goal means more to me than anything. When Virgo scored, I was because he went over and kissed him. Virgo takes all the credit for these goals, but it was, it was me and Charlie, really. I try as a manager normally to try and restrain myself a little bit and not be too much in people's faces. But that was just such a relief, you know, and such a, a moment that, you know, it was, it was un unrestrained and, and totally spontaneous. The last ditch equaliser destroyed Swindon and had Albion buzzing as they prepared for the penalty shootout. Mark had sort of got us all in together and who wanted to take a penalty and I put my hand up straight away. I missed one in the final for Gillingham against Man City. I vowed never to take a penalty again. So when they were asking for volunteers, um, I was glad that five people put their hands up, but they asked who'd want to take the sudden death one and it was me. It was strange, we just walked to the halfway line after that and just the way the boys were talking. We felt we'd won. It, it, there was a confidence there. And Parkin. Parkin kept his nerve to get the penalties underway before Richard Carpenter stepped up for Albion's first spot kick. The Wib Dean Stadium holds its breath. Carpenter. It's another good one. Matty Hayward took the safety first approach straight down the middle. Next it was Iwalumo's turn and McGee's meticulous preparations began to count. Big kick for the big man, and Chris Iwalumo with a fine finish. Mark McGee had his doing a penalty shootout uh, every day with both players, both sides of the box, just hurling abuse as you're, as you're taking penalties, and I guess there's no, there's no better practice. You know, I hear people say all the time that, um, you know, you can't prepare for the pressure and all that. Well, I think it's the opposite. I think that preparation and that practice is the thing that removes the pressure because you can take yourself out of the moment. This is what good managers do. Um, you know, he sort of knew and what to expect, years and years of experience, and he knew that we had to work on 
uh, our penalties and we knew that we didn't want to leave anything unturned. 2-2 on penalties, it's Mooney, oh and it's saved! And what a stop from Ben Roberts to foil, ironically, Swindon's Player of the Year. I think I, I dived to the right and, and stuck a left hand up, um, kept that out. You've got a feel for Tommy Mooney. It is John Piercy. And he could give Brighton the edge. Piercy does give Brighton the edge. It was nervous watching it, but I just wouldn't have liked to talk one if I was on the pitch still. Rory Fallon kept his cool. Some fans can barely watch. Well, Adam Virgo, who scored with that header in stoppage time at the end of extra time, now is asked to make another massive contribution for Brighton and Hove Albion. I was never missing that penalty, even though it was quite close. It is Virgo, and it is fabulous. And the pressure now is really on Swindon. Andy Gurney has to score for Swindon. If he doesn't, Brighton are through. Gurney hasn't scored, and Brighton and Hove Albion are off to the Millennium Stadium in Cardiff. The scenes afterwards, people say there's not an atmosphere at Port 15. There was that night, trust me. I remember Mark McGee running off the pitch, trying to get away from the fans. I, I, I find it difficult to remember that without remembering Charlie's version of it in the DVD at the time, you know. I did try to get him back by running his legs off in pre-season, but um, he survived that, but uh, it was a funny moment. In the dressing room, wild celebrations. And McGee's hunch had been correct. Albion's opponents at the Millennium Stadium would be Bristol City, a showdown to savour. Great feelings, going back into the changing room, sandwiches flying around with Vogue's doing an interview, people eating them on the sandwiches and water going everywhere and I was spraying deodorant at people and it was just brilliant. It was, it was superb, great, great film, but of course that, that wasn't the job done, you know, that just goes to the final.